Welcome back to episode two of brainstorming next year's homeschool in my truck while I'm at soccer practice. Hey everyone, welcome back to Regular Secular Mama. If you're new here, thank you for checking out my channel. I'm glad you're here. My name is Cassie and I'm a fifth year homeschooling mom to two kids who are currently ages nine and 12 years old. This video is a follow up to a video I did a couple of weeks ago where I had you join me at soccer practice and I kind of brainstormed what I'm thinking for next year as far as homeschooling, uh, writing and composition. So that's what I covered in my last video on this. Today I'll be doing kind of the same thing, but I'll be talking about science for next year. I even got my favorite science related shirt on. I don't know if you can see that. This video might get a little bit rambly and chatty because science is the thing I have had the hardest time pinning down for next year. I'm still not 100% sold on the things that I have chosen, but I think I have a better idea of what I want to do. So stay tuned and I'll share what I think I have so far. If you've been following me for a while, you may know that this year was the first year that we stopped doing science together as a family. Up until this year, we have done science kind of like we do history as a group activity. We did all the Real Science Odyssey level one courses together with both my kids. This year, because my daughter was moving into sixth grade and she really is at a level that's uh, quite a bit further than my nine-year-old, we decided to go ahead and split up science. We had one more course from Real Science Odyssey's level one courses uh, that we hadn't done yet, and that was physics. My son decided he, he wanted to do that. That was the plan. I had already purchased it, I think, and had some things ready to go. So he went ahead and did physics with me this year. We are like more than halfway through, I think. <laughs> I don't even know if we're gonna finish it, honestly, but we're gonna try. We're enjoying it so far. Um, I'll do a whole review on that later. But my daughter had an option. I told her, if you wanna stick with Real Science Odyssey, we can do biology level two. That would be like the next thing to do, or we could do something else. And she said she liked the idea of studying life sciences. So we looked at biology level two, and I think she looked at a sample of Oak Meadow uh, what grade was it? Whichever grade does life science or biology. I gave her those two options uh, because I thought those would be the best fit for us and she went with Real Science Odyssey. Again, I'll do a whole review of that later, uh, preferably when we're finished with it. We're not quite there, so stay tuned. <laughs> but anyway, that's what she did this year. It's definitely way above my son's pay scale. Uh, it's more on her level. It was even pretty challenging for her. So anyway, we are going to continue doing science separately next year. My hope is that my daughter's last year of middle school, <laughs> you know, if we're going by grade levels, uh, we'll be able to do the um, Build Your Libraries Level 8, which is History of Science. It is one that I have been really looking forward to since we started Build Your Library, and I think it's, it would just be a really fun way to combine history and science before she moves on to do like serious high school stuff. Until then, we still have at least another year of doing science separately, and I gave, I, I kind of gave both of them a choice for how we go about doing science. Now, my son, after finishing physics, will have at least touched on all the main science uh, topics. He kind of has like an open choice on what to do. He gets a little bit overwhelmed with uh, a lot of choices thrown at him though, so I kind of like sifted through and picked a couple of things that I thought might be a good fit. I was between so I've been looking at so many guys, so many science curriculum, but I kind of narrowed it down to Oak Meadow grade five. My concern with that one was that maybe it would be a little bit heavy on writing. Pretty much anything that involves physical writing of answers down on paper is really challenging for him. Uh, I think emotionally or mentally he has like this block on doing stuff like that. So it's definitely something we can work around and we do work around all the time, but it would be nice to have something that I don't have to alter too much and that I could just say, okay, we're doing this next and then this next and even help him learn how to take on some of this work a little more independently. So that was one option and I let him kind of look at some samples with me and we read through like what was involved in lessons and that looked like it might work. 
And then let's see, we had, oh my gosh, a whole number of other options that we were looking at. I looked at open Psy Ed for both of my kids. It looks really, really good. That's the one that is free. It is based on NGSS standards. The only concern I have with that one, with Open Sci Ed, is that maybe because we don't have as big of a group to bounce ideas off of, the, uh, the discussion aspect of that program would kind of be lacking. And I, it seems like a lot of it is rooted in discussing and having scientific discussions and being open to others ideas and things like that and like bouncing ideas back and forth so i love the way it looks i even planned out like how we would kind of go about using it i i just don't think it works very well for like one-on-one -on -one with me and a kid you know what i mean so i kind of took that one off the table like i said i looked at a lot of different sciences for both of them for him specifically the one i think we have settled on <laughs> And this can definitely change because I'm just not sure. Um, but I think we have settled on Elevate Science. We haven't really used a, like a textbook style curriculum basically made for a classroom or geared toward uh, like classroom teachers. And that's what Elevate Science is made for. It's very colorful. It looks very engaging. I like that there are some hands-on things included, but it appears that you can access videos of those hands-on labs if maybe you don't have the materials for them or the time or inclination to do all those hands-on things. That might help if we're like having a rough week or something. So I like that. My son looked at it and he likes how colorful and engaging the textbook looks or the workbook. I like that he writes directly in the workbook or the textbook so there's not He's not like looking at a textbook and then taking notes and having to write outside of that. I like that it's all together in one thing. One downside or potential downside I see with that one is maybe being a little bit distracting with all the pictures and images and sidebars in the, the workbook. But regardless, uh, I think it looks really good. I love all the access to the uh, teacher materials online. If you think Elevate Science sounds like something that might work for you and you're interested in learning more about it, I highly, highly recommend going to check out Arlene and Company's channel. She's on Instagram uh, and she has been for a while, but she has been trying to put things on YouTube uh, to, you know, get across platforms. Anyway, she's got a couple of videos on Elevate Science. One most recently is going into like the online teacher portal part of it, and it really helps to clear up how that online portion works and how to access all those materials. So I highly recommend checking her out if you have any questions on it or want to learn more about it. But long story short, I think I'm like 90% sure that's the one we're going to use for my son next year. Now, my daughter, on the other hand, uh, will be 12 years old, going into, I guess, seventh grade, and she, she's a totally different story. I don't know if it's her personality or if there was something about biology that just, like, flipped a switch for her, but she's not really enjoying science that much this year. I think it may actually be more to do with her personality than the curriculum, but... She's just not loving it. I was hoping to do something physics related with her next year because it's the one uh, area of science that she hasn't really had exposure to yet outside of, you know, normal life <laughs> as a homeschooler, but she's just not feeling it. And I've talked to her about different curriculum I've looked at. I've looked at an Oak Meadow option for her that does more physics uh, in it. I've looked at... I don't know, so many, so many different sciences. And almost everyone I've showed her, she kind of does the preteen thing and like rolls her eyes and it's like, okay, mom, whatever, just pick something, I don't care. <laughs> so I don't know, I think she's just kind of over it. I was thinking it might be kind of cool if she did something else, maybe not science related, maybe just something else useful in academics that she could do a little more independently. She really prefers doing things on her own without a whole lot of uh, guidance or input from me. I've been kind of brainstorming about it and thinking about it. And then I had heard about Pandaya Press putting out a new 
curriculum that's sort of related to History Odyssey. And I just knew the title of it beforehand. I didn't really know what it was about. They just released it like last week though. It's called History Compass. And I didn't really know what it involved until they released it. I got my hands on the sample of it. Um, they have extensive samples, by the way. If you're ever interested in Pandaya Press stuff, go to their website, find the Try Before You Buy section and you can find like multiple weeks of lessons to like sample things first. Anyway, so I checked out the sample. It's like the first, I think, four or five chapters or lessons in the book and it looks so good, guys. It looks like just what I think we need. It has nothing to do with science, really, <laughs> and that's okay. It It's more like how to read and analyze historical sources, how to think like a historian, how to uh, research and write like a historian would. I think that might be a good option for her just in general as far as any sort of academic research or study or writing. That kind of skill set is something that she's kind of had to tap into this year. There are research assignments every week with biology level two. There are, uh, you know, research assignments that we're doing for American history. So those kinds of like research skills, analytical skills, and um, being able to write academically about those things, that is all just super important. Anyway, so I think that this program looks really good. I think it's something that she could do almost without my help at all. The whole book is written directly to the student. So I talked with her about it. I brought up the option of maybe doing a year without a focused science curriculum, and she was totally on board with that. I'm not surprised. She understands that she would be doing this on her own independently, along with whatever history, you know, we're doing as a group, which is fine because the book, it, it's not really a history curriculum. It's more like researching and using those skills. That's kind of where we're at. I'm, again, like 80, 90 percent sure that's what we're going to wind up doing for her next year. The other option I had for her, uh, she didn't really like the look of Elevate Science. She didn't like the whole colorful textbook thing. She really didn't want to have to like go into the website and find all these videos and things to do. She didn't like that. I showed her Oak Meadow and she wasn't really excited about that either. So I think this is really going to be a good option for her uh, just to take kind of a year off of science. There is one other potential science that she sort of seemed interested in and that was next level homeschool. I have heard a lot about it. I don't know a lot about it though. It's kind of new to me. I've never really like looked into it closely. So Next Level Homeschool, if you're not familiar with it, it's an online class that's taught by a person, an instructor, but it's not, you're not like doing live discussions and live lectures and things with the teacher, I don't think. <laughs> I think they're like lesson modules that you access through a, a portal like Canvas. Yeah, I think it's Canvas. Uh, if you're familiar with that from college or whatever, it's like a way to access lesson modules, assignments, and like there's like discussion boards. You can discuss projects and things with other classmates. She seemed to really like the idea of having classmates that she could like discuss things with and be able to talk to uh, another teacher besides me. We were kind of intrigued by it. So the, the program, Next Level Homeschool, offers these $5 courses. They're just one week uh, modules on Canvas that you do. I had her choose one of those $5 courses just to kind of try it out and see if the online um, Canvas program thing, that format is going to work well for her. So she chose cyber safety, which I'm very thankful for because she's using a lot more things and I just, she's not very receptive to me teaching her about internet safety. Anyway, so she chose cyber safety and we just logged into it like this morning <laughs> and it looks really well organized. Um, the instructions to the student so far from what I've seen look really easy to understand. I told her, okay, we'll work through this one. If you like this format and you think this is something that will work well for you, we can try another course, uh, maybe something that lasts a little longer, like a month long course. It's like 50 or $60. That's probably my biggest hang up with this option is the cost involved. 
I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure it's it runs about 250 or 260 for a semester long course. So the full year would be, you know, it would be an expense. <laughs> it's just way more than we normally spend on one subject of curriculum. That's just an option. We're still kind of exploring it. For right now, I'm not planning on using it because I just don't know if it's going to be worth it. You know what I mean? I'm sure it is worth it. I just don't know if it's going to be worth it for us to shell that out for a subject that she's not crazy about. Now, just because she may not choose any science curriculum to do for the entire year, doesn't mean we're not going to do anything science related. She and I have toyed with the idea of something more interest led, perhaps choosing a science topic that she's interested in and just kind of going on her own to explore more about that through library books or curiosity stream or whatever. We won't like completely remove science from the table, but we are likely going to pass up having a whole year science curriculum for her. Anyway, I hope you really enjoy this kind of background and format because it works really well for me and I'm able to actually get videos filmed. <laughs> I plan to continue doing some more videos like this. Next up, I think I'm going to talk about what we're going to do for history next year and I don't know, maybe more boring things like math or something. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support, especially right now being in this RV. It is not the ideal situation for filming videos, so don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, and subscribing will help get these videos out to more viewers. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!